Everyone wants to optimize health, but nobody knows how to define it. Is health simply absence of disease? Can we use the latest science to measure health at the molecular level? And how can we translate this into clinical practice? Dr. Ted Achacoso will address these topics in a knowledge-dense lecture. I suggest you pause the video whenever you encounter a new concept to get the most out of this lecture. I will put all the links mentioned in the lecture in the description box below this video. I am Dr. Lucia Aronica and I am on a mission to make the science I teach in the classroom accessible to everybody. If you want to support this mission, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get notified when I post a new video. So let's jump into it. Take away this definition for yourselves, health equals A plus B plus C. So health is the absence of disease and is the purview of illness medicine. And B, the balance between anabolism and catabolism according to the cycle of life of the organism. Remember our uh, summer and winter um, uh, in the balance uh, uh, before in the cell danger response? Well, here it is. That's where we practice health optimization medicine and practice. So what it means is that just because you're not doesn't mean that you're healthy, it only means that you're not sick. Now, what I'd like the students to know is really health and fitness are two different things. Fitness allows one to handle stress from a baseline state according to the life cycle of an organism, okay? And a simple way to remember this is to ask the question, fit for what? In other words, you may be fit to run a marathon, but you're not healthy, or you may be healthy, but you're not fit to run a marathon. Or you may be healthy, but you're not mentally fit to stand trial, right? Um, so, so home hope, so we go to optimization. We don't use illness medicine uh, range of values. For example, patients sometimes come to me, oh, I have normal thyroid uh, uh, values. It, it's the recommended daily allowance in your nutrition and the laboratory cut of values for diseases are survival values and not optimal values. So we neotenize or make younger your metabolic subnetworks to values that it had when you were between 21 and 30 years old, because that's assumed to be the optimal um, uh, uh, functioning of our um, metabolic pathways, or we use evolutionarily derived values as the optimal range. So uh, Terry Hertog uh, in, in Europe actually uses the mean value at uh, age 25, right? In the US, uh, Mark Gordon uh, uses the median value between age 20 to 30, but I use the 50th to 75th percentile at age 21 to 30, or use evolutionarily derived values, for example, for vitamin D. Now, um, now we go to medicine and practice, uh, the third element. So it's very simple. You measure, you compare, and balance. And how do we do that? So the first, you measure the metabolite levels, especially of the nutrient and hormone networks, right? Then you compare the measurements to the metabolite levels found at age 21 to 30 or at evolutionarily derived values, the optimal range. We don't use standard reference ranges for given for diseases, right? And then balance, meaning we correct and shift the nutrient and hormone networks using the active form of nutrients and bioidentical hormones towards the optimal range by using ratio correction and network-wide range shifting. So here's how we order the use of balancing agents. Our first line will be, of course, what your body uses, right? The second line will be the plants, uh, the fungi, bacteria, and phages. And it's only in the third line that we actually use drugs because many of the drugs that we're using have never been encountered by the body in evolution. So here's our short lecture summary. So we have the 3373 with the three scales of evolutionary perspective. We have the evolution adaptation scale. We scale back to the Paleolithic man from the modern man. We have the size complexity scale, scale back from the cell to the organ. And we have the environment chronobiology scale. You scale back to pre-industrial world from post-industrial world. Now, the three principles that each require a shift in frame of reference from pathogenesis to cellulogenesis, uretization to neotenization, organology to holobiontology. Seven pillars of home hope, well, you already know that. And the three elements of home hope that define and deliver the standard of 
care in health, not disease, is health equals A plus B plus C. You already know that, right? Optimization between ages 21, 30, or evolutionary derived values, and medicine and practice of measuring, comparing, and balancing using ratio correction and network-wide range shifting. So, uh, Ted, thank you very much for, uh, thank you again for being with us. Yeah, I'm enjoying this.